there are the Aberdeen fans, more than happy, I'm sure, with their side's first half performance. The Aberdeen team back on the field already, still waiting for Rangers. So a suitable moment to remind you to make sure you're with us tomorrow night when we have live coverage of the game from Anfield, Liverpool against Ipswich Town and the FA Cup replay at Upton Park between West Ham and Sunderland. Make sure you're with us at 7 o'clock. But, as we say, no goals in the first half, but certainly the way things went in the last 10 minutes of the first half, that situation can't last for too long. Let's return to our commentators, Gordon McQueen, who's a shunt shifted up that ladder once again, and Martin Tyler. Thank you, John. Aberdeen started the season with five straight wins. It looked as though it would be a season of success for them. And they lost at home to Airdrie in a Skull Cup tie. And really found it hard to get their bearings back on a regular basis since then. Many of you, I'm sure, having a look at Rangers in a live game, perhaps for the first time. Gordon McQueen, there's a, a feeling in these parts that possibly the midfield, or there's a lot of uh, hard work put into that department, lacks maybe a Paul McStay or even a Jim Bett. Yeah, they're probably missing a little bit of craft in the middle of the park, and Jim Bett and, of course, Paul McStay at Celtic, they're probably two most creative players. Um, in the country, but of course, Jim Bett turned Rangers down last year when they had the opportunity to come, to come and join and rejoin Rangers. So here's McKimmy. The uh, Aberdeen defenders certainly uh, pleasing their manager, I'm sure, in the first half, and the Jess coming out with a bright start to the second half. Now, Willie Miller was such a tough character as a player, and I'm sure as he learns about management, he'll be a demanding man as well. They always used to say, as a player, he refereed the game whenever he could. He might find that a bit harder to do from the bench. No doubt he'll have a go. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Mason. Nice touch from Hauster, steered forward by Spackman. Hakley is offside. David Livingston's been checking out the damage to Scott Boo. The quick word from David. Yeah, Martin, I spoke to the physio and it seems it's a hamstring injury, but perhaps not quite so bad as it looked. He hasn't certainly gone to a hospital or anything like that. It just looked particularly painful, but uh, not particularly complicated, it seems. Again, a heavy pitch, the greater risk of muscle strains. I don't think the pitch has cut up quite as much as the players expected it to do. Ferguson will, uh, I would suspect, see plenty of Gary Stevens forward in the second half. Aberdeen struggling to control him here. Spackman. McCoy's calling for it in the centre. Tenkat trying to prevent the ball coming in, but they let uh, Halstra drift in behind them. Grant's had a partially clearing the danger. Here's Tenkat again. Rangers throw. Hately, it was that long Stevens throw again towards Hately coming off the goal line itself to try and steer it across, knowing that the laws of the game say that he can't be offside direct from a throw. That was Ten Cat, Hately trying to muscle a position, the crowd feeling that he, in fact, was muscled out of it. Stayed off by Kane, and it wasn't Mason, the number 14, who was offside, but Ian Jess, who was infield of him, and at the crucial moment ahead of him. You mentioned Martin about Gary Stevens pushing forward them this half. It really has been a feature of Rangers play this. Steven Stevens, a Rangers play this se season. Stevens getting forward and Robertson getting forward, but they've not been able to do that tonight with Aberdeen playing four across the middle and making it difficult for them. It's Tenkat who's trying to stop Gary Stevens and Paul Mason on the right of midfield keeping an eye on David Robertson with the uh, utility man Paul Kane playing up the middle with Jess. McKimmy. Jess slipping past Brown but Goff 
Too strong for Kane. That's a miss hit by McKimmy, really. And then Jess, who started with Rangers on schoolboy forms, but wasn't taken on at Ibrox. But he certainly was properly penalised then as he tried to throw his weight around. Not the biggest of strikers, not by any means. Not quite in the Mark Hately style. <laughs> So a first half in which Rangers gradually gain control but were restricted for the most part to shots around the edge of the area. Challenged on a couple of occasions by McCoy. And then Hately's header. Aberdeen trying to play on the break. And they've got a free kick now. And Goff might need some treatment. Yeah, it looked as if it might have been a little bit of a foul by Paul Kane in the first place previous to that, but that was just a, just a nasty collision with no real, no real intent there on Richard Goff's behalf, but I've been with a free kick nevertheless. It was partly a physical pain for Goff, and I suspect a mental pain as well, because he feels that Rangers were a bit hard done by that. And he's uh, back in position now. Well, Tenkat eyeing the angle with his left foot in mind. But Jim Bat is there as well. And it's left for Bet. He and Jess left ruminating. A header that should, from his point of view, gone back across goal, and just uh, plopped out of play. Yeah, it was a nicely worked free kick with Tenkart running over the ball and Ian Jess making a run from a central position at the back post and wasn't really picked up and it was a poor header, should have directed that one across goals. And Jess again, who's developing uh, a meaner streak to his play. <laughs> George Smith, first of all dealing with the foul and then Spoke to the culprit for that, turning to Kane, who obviously had his say. Yeah, that was more of a stumble than anything else for Richard Goff. No real intent again, being Jess. Eighthly. And uh, Rangers capitalise on these little nicks and flicks. Now the referee here has seen a high tackle by Ferguson, I think it was. Ian Ferguson went in and referee George Smith straight away appreciated the uh, severity of the incident here. Stephen Wright is the Aberdeen player who cleared the ball and there was no need for Ferguson to do that. Well, I think he must be quite happy with a booking there because it was very late indeed in closing Stephen Wright down there for that clearance and lifted his boot far too high. Well, one would say he had time to pull out if he wanted to. <laughs> yeah, but five minutes. And John Brown calming him down. There's <laughs> a poacher turned gamekeeper for a moment. <laughs> right. He's back on his feet quicker than perhaps one would have anticipated. Certainly was a high challenge that could have left a very definite mark on the Aberdeen left back Brown first to the ball here's Mason remember in these uh, meetings between the two sides this season it's been the away team that's come out on top on every occasion twice the Rangers have won up to Todry to the satisfaction of David Robertson I'm sure and Aberdeen won 2-0 here at the end of September Goals from Brian Grant and Ian Jess. That's a push by Wright on Gordon. Well, I think Dale Gordon finds life much easier away from Ibrox, where teams tend to, Ibrox certainly, get a lot of players behind the ball. It makes, it makes it difficult for wide players. No sooner than they beat one player than another player's closing them down. McCoist. 
Well, with concentration all around Haitley then. And Chris was first to the free kick. Yeah, a little bit of slack marking there, but young Gary Smith gave Ali a free header, but the ball came over far too fast for him to do anything with it. He couldn't really guide the header. Goff, well above Kane. Grant. And Brown, pleased that Goff filled him behind him, Spackman. Every challenge at the moment is particularly fierce. Rangers trying to reassert themselves at the start of the second half, and Willie Miller has sent his team out here with the, the most determined attitude. The side cast in the manager's own image. And George Smith with his hands full at the moment. Coist. That's Ferguson. He turned away towards the referee, feeling that there might have been a deflection then. We might be able to uh, prove that one way or the other. Yeah, John Brown floats a long free kick in. We're up scrapping for it. Hately just lays it back. Yeah, it might have took a, a deflection off his, his chest there, or, or even his arm for that matter. It's off Brian Grant, I think. Grant again. And they're angry on the uh, Aberdeen dugout with Mark Hakely. Whether he left a foot in then as the ball was cleared. Well, I think when players are two physical players such as Mark Hakely and Brian Evan are fighting for balls, there's always a chance there's going to be elbows flying. It's very difficult to say from this angle whether uh, that was an intentional elbow on Mark, on Mark Hately's behalf. But certainly it flowed Brian Irvin, whatever it was. I think uh, it was certainly that first incident. Hately was around the ball after it had dropped as well. As they uh, stood up on the Aberdeen bench to bellow their protests. Here's Stevens. Hard for control football to surface in this uh, intimidating atmosphere at the moment oh but Ferguson almost found a way through as Rangers got back to the job in hand very much in fine style it was very yeah. neatly constructed this yeah lovely little bit of football lovely turn he just slides Ian Ferguson in here he gets in in front of the defender and a great diving block with Theo Snell does here it is again a lovely little flick from Ali Barges his way through in Ferguson. Great, great goalkeeper. And that was Ferguson using his uh, strength properly then. Coming through uh, on the burst. But Snell just did his job. And Aberdeen are still holding Rangers. Bet takes the free kick. Kane to nip in behind Goff. No flag from the linesman, the ball has stayed in play. Mason! Well, that looked as though it might have been goalbound. Paul Mason's done that before. It really was an instinctive reaction as the ball dropped on his left side and he blazed away on the half volley. He yeah, didn't have crack this one. Who does it half? Yes. That's Gary, Gary Stevens in the face. Possibly from that angle might have just been veering wide. But Aberdeen reminding Rangers that the home side here have got to think about defending as well as breaking down determined opposition. Yeah, it's all very hurried at this moment in time. It needs one or two players, Jim Bett, Ian Ferguson. Nigel Spackman try and put their foot in the ball and slow things down a bit and start playing a bit more football. Nostra. Hately. He's never frightened of shooting when the ball comes to his left foot. And uh, he relished the opportunity as Halstra knocked it inside to him. Actually, he did have more time, but uh, that's easy to say afterwards. If it had flown into the top corner, 
He'd still be doing a lap of honour. And Robertson with the uh, speed there to really make Mason give up the chase. Well, Spatman has had a blow in the face. No doubt about that. There's the evidence. Well, the uh, Premier League in Scotland does have a reputation for hurly-burly. An athletic game where there aren't too many occasions where the purists are totally satisfied, but it's very uh, entertaining viewing in its way. If you've got a strong constitution. Gorham comes with the fist. Ten cut. Oh, and if Jess could have uh, hauled that one in, then Rangers might have had a problem. Ferguson. Have to hold a little in midfield at the moment. Gordon's coming alongside him in the absence of Spackman. Ian Durant is warming up along with the other substitutes. Paul Rideout, who was brought here because of Haitley's injury problems and has, by all accounts, and by Mark Haitley's own account, been playing well as Haitley's deputy. So we've had an hour. Most of it, or more of it, should I say, in Rangers' favour. But they haven't got the goal that their pressure has threatened to produce. And that will worry Walter Smith and his assistant, Archie Knox. Hatley, not much movement that time, but of course, Rangers not wanting to overcommit forward from midfield at the moment. Alstra finding himself on the right against Gary Smith and still with the ball until he goes down, but that's not a trick. Will George Smith. Mason. Brown comes across. There's a little ball on here for Gordon. But uh, John Brown just put too much pace into the pass. Built, and that needs to be uh, cleared up under the medical regulations. Stevens. Here's McCoyst. Stevens again. Gordon. McCoyst had gone inside him, and Richard Goff is there as well. Can Haitley knock this one back across? He does. Ferguson, it's wide. It's a corner, though. Richard Goff played a major part then with his back to goal. Ferguson says thank you for teeing it up. Yeah, it was a lovely build-up, deep cross from Dale Gordon on the right. Great knock back to Mark Haitley. Goffy tees it up for Ian Ferguson, but we off target with his shot. Ferguson waiting on the edge of the area. Goff is poised. Haitley to come in as well. Gordon is there. Aberdeen have pulled everyone back. Alstra to take the corner. Ferguson! Well, it's sped through the crowd, but to Aberdeen's considerable relief, went on past the pack behind for a goal kick. The roar heralds the return of Spackman. When he turns around, we'll see how uh, they've and the bleeding. Brown with the header. And then Irvin doing likewise. Right, just relieving the pressure, but hoping perhaps the ball might drop kindly for Aberdeen. And 
ball. Good pressing there by Mason. Well, there's a plaster just uh, below the bottom lip there. Nigel Spackman is a very chatty character, and I'm sure that won't stop him uh, passing his comments. Hately runs off Irvin. 19 minutes gone in the second half. Willie Miller's team continue to defend with a reasonable amount of confidence against the Premier League leaders. Jess, most responsibility really on him to hold the ball up and let Aberdeen draw some breath at the back. Robertson challenges them now. Here's Halstra. Knocked away well by Irvin. Aberdeen naturally do like to play a passing game. As you're just seeing, ten cut. of the high order from Stephen Wright whether he would feel he'd expected one of his front players to have filled that space well they didn't react it was a risk they would have gone offside in any case three up for Rangers Haitley is one of them the extra man was McKimmy offside of course inevitably puts the ball in but the flag was up before he slammed the ball past Snelders. Yeah, the flag was up well before, quite some time before. Anna McLeod pounds in this, but not a bad little finish. <laughs> what do you expect? <laughs> <laughs> so he stays on 199. <laughs> Hately. Here's Halstrup. Trying to trick McKimmy. And he does make a position for the cross. Haitley. Mason very coolly. Clearing Aberdeen's lines. Haitley way beyond the far post. Unselfishly knocked it across goal. Archie Knox is furious with the linesman. He's uh, aided the referee in giving Aberdeen a free kick. I can understand him if you a really peculiar decision. McKimmy. Jess. Only Kane really in the centre for Aberdeen. And two others thinking about getting there now, including Ten Cat. But Jess has lost out and he's flung himself down. He won't get anything there. Haitley. McCoy's trying to stay onside. He's done that. Oh, unlucky. He knew Gordon was running. I hope that there will be enough pace for the ball to reach him. I must say, I've been impressed with Gary Smith at the heart of the Aberdeen defence tonight. He's not played that many games since signing from Falkirk, but he's played with a lot of composure for a youngster tonight, and played particularly well. As has Stephen Wright, who's moved into a position in the left back row that's alien to him. Well, for so long it was McLeish and Miller in there with Irvin the understudy. Now Brian Irvin, very much one of the main men. And Gary Smith's taking a, a major claim here to impress a manager who knows absolutely everything there is to know about that particular job. I just wonder what Walter Smith is thinking at the moment. has reached the three-quarter mark. It's certainly not one you want to turn your eyes away from. Anything can happen in an instant. Goff. It's not the wisest part of the pitch to show his ball-juggling skills, but the Rangers managed to get the ball.